I shall miss that when we leave Casablanca. It's gracious of you to share it with me. Good day, ma'am. Monsieur, good day. <laughs> You're a man, please. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. Remember when you were a little kid and your mom took you to Fantasia? Remember when that little white squiggly thing came floating up to a what looked like a jellyfish and tried to kiss it and the jellyfish then tried to, I don't know, swallow the thing. Anyway, those little things represented a, a form of life that was considered much simpler than life today. Here they were showing how life multiplies and keeps multiplying until perhaps billions and trillions and quadrillions of forms of life uh, multiply. Then the, the black ink represented millions of years passing and then we have more complex organisms which have evolved from those simple organisms we saw in the first instance. And these more complex organisms are competing and of course that's is works. There are millions of years pass and the, there's still more complex uh, organisms all competing uh, and only the ones that um, are more able to survive are able to pass on traits to their descendants. And now millions of years pass again and uh, now we have things that are a little more recognizable jellyfish and <clears throat> minnows, things like that, and still they're competing because without competition there's no way that um, only the more able to survive are able to pass on traits to their descendants. And uh, now they're showing you um, the fish actually over a period of millions of years developing legs. They're just showing it to you in a, um, a very fast frame. So there's the fish developing legs. Oh, wait a second. I forgot, the, the whole purpose of this uh, video wasn't to show um, how once life started, uh, evolution um, uh, produced all the things we have today. The purpose of this video is to talk about the first cell, the first living cell that ever existed. So we've got to back up to the very beginning of the film and talk about what happened before this little squiggly thing kissed the jellyfish. And so that's the subject of this video. This video hopes to show the probability of producing the first living cell by chance. Science has shown countless times that biological viability is all about numerous attempts. In other words, there might be a million living cells produced and only one survived to reproduce in uh, to two and then four, eight, sixteen, and so on. So even if we show that the first living cell happened by chance, that doesn't mean it would have survived long enough to reproduce and its offspring survived long enough to reproduce. In fact, scientists understand it would probably take untold billions of attempts before a living cell could exist for a few seconds and reproduce enough offspring to establish life on Earth. Just because a cell has viability and can reproduce is not enough to populate the Earth with life. So please realize this experiment doesn't examine the possibility of sustainable life happening by chance. That would require untold billions of attempts before sustainable viability. This experiment is just about producing one living cell. Scientists agree that the first living cell had to have four things. One, a cell wall. Two, the ability to maintain and expand the cell wall, that means grow. Three, the ability to process food, which would be other molecules floating around the cell, to create energy. Four, the ability to split itself to reproduce. Several theoretical and experimental studies have endeavored to derive the minimal set of genes that are necessary and sufficient to sustain a functioning cell under ideal conditions. That is, in the presence of unlimited amounts of all essential nutrients and in the absence of any adverse factors including competition. The consensus is the absolute minimum is 68 genes. 
Now, ignoring most of the problems of genes instantaneously working in concert with one another, let's just think of each gene as a single letter in a string of 68 letters making a sentence. This is appropriate as scientists now recognize genes as the language of biology. Bear in mind, each letter represents a unique gene. Here's the sentence. The first living cell had at least 68 genes instantly working together. Now remember, each letter represents a separate gene. The chance of this sentence with 68 separate genes, or letters in this case, coming together without intelligent design is determined by multiplying 68 times 68 times 68 times 68 times 68 and so on until you reach a number which is 68 to the 68th power or in base 10, 10 to the 124th power. 10 to the 120th fourth power looks like this. A credible experiment must establish a specific time, a specific number of trials, and a specific number of variables per trial. We must eliminate the errors associated with extraneous data. For example, let's use the example of a lottery to illustrate how time and number of incidences relate to probability. If you had to pick a number between one and a million, you would have one chance in a million of getting it right. If you had to pick a number between one and a trillion, you would have one chance in a trillion of getting it right. Let's say the Lottery Commission decided to do the mother of all lotteries. If you pick the correct number between 1 and 10 to the 124th power, they will give you all the money brought in from that lottery plus a trillion dollars. Each lottery ticket costs just a penny and the number will not change for a 100 years or until somebody guesses the correct number. You can enlist the help of friends, even the help of the entire population of the world if you wish. First, let's have everyone in the world buy lottery tickets. You give everyone specific instructions so no number is repeated. To make things easy, let's say the population of the Earth is 10 billion people. Let's say they buy one lottery ticket every second, every day and night for the entire 100 years. That's 10 billion times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 100, and that equals 315 quintillion, 360 quadrillion, or round it off 10 to the 18th power. So in 100 years, the world would have bought 10 to the 18th power lottery tickets. Seems impossible, doesn't it? After 100 years, the whole world buying lottery tickets day and night is still way short of guessing the correct number. And you would have wasted not only 100 years of the world's labor, but spent a quintillion dollars, which is a trillion times a million dollars in the effort. But wait! The Lottery Commission decides to extend the lottery for 100 more years and not change the winning number. Because of all the changes that have happened in the last 100 years, your descendants think they can still win the lottery. In the last hundred years, the population of Earth increased ten times to 100 billion people. And now everyone has computers that can buy a million lottery tickets a second, 24 hours a day, for a hundred years. So, here's the calculation. 100 billion times 1 million times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 100 equals 315 octillion 360 septillion. When we add this to the previous 100 years, we get 10 to the 29th power lottery tickets. So now, after another 100 years of wasted labor and the use of all the world's computers, we still haven't guessed the correct number to the lottery. At this point, an alien from another planet shows up. He takes the president of the Lottery Commission hostage until he agrees to extend the lottery for a 100 billion years. The Lottery Commission agrees to not change the number and allow a quadrillion aliens from 1,000 other planets to get in on the action. Now these aliens have computers that can buy a trillion lottery tickets a second, 24 hours a day for the 100 billion years. And they are so grateful to the Earth for being allowed to participate that they give an advanced computer to every person on Earth whose population has increased in the last 100 years to a trillion people. So here's the math. One quintillion, 
one quadrillion times one trillion times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 100 billion equals 10 to the 46th power. Then we add the results from the last 200 years and we get a total of 10 to the 47th power. We are still way short of guessing the number and winning the lottery. Well, the descendants of those aliens are really mad. The entire population of the cosmos has wasted a hundred billion years and all their wealth on this lottery. The United Alien Nations send a military force to take over planet Earth. They storm the Lottery Commission buildings and seize the vault where the winning number is kept. They find out the winning number was 10 to the 123rd power plus 1. The aliens ask their top scientists whether the lottery was fair. The scientists determine that even if every proton, neutron, and electron in the cosmos were computers, and each computer bought a trillion to lottery tickets a second for 100 billion years, the winning number could never have been reached. Here's the math they showed at the trial when they sentenced the employees of the Lottery Commission to death. 10 to the 80th power times a trillion times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365 times 100 billion equals 10 to the 111th power. Unfortunately for the inhabitants of Earth, the lottery had become so lucrative that almost everyone worked for the Lottery Commission. The aliens didn't want to take over the Earth, so they looked for anyone who was not involved with the lottery. They found an obscure African tribe called the Livingstones, to whom they presented the deed to planet Earth. At the ceremony, the chief of the tribe acknowledged the missionary who had told them over 100 billion years before that the meek would inherit the Earth. Dr. Livingstone, I presume.